Welcome back to Tiny Grimes Games, and I'm here with another Star Wars Destiny video. And what a great day. I'm hanging out, uh, a little thing comes up. Team Covenant has a new awesome video with new spoilers and an interview with Lucas Letzinger. Oh my goodness, so make sure you go watch that. All kinds of great insight, but the bottom line is, we've got new spoilers today, so we've got something to talk about. Alright, so, most exciting of the spoilers is, of course... The new Darth Vader. Um, this one's shocking to me. We all knew there was going to be another Darth Vader. It's in the rule book explaining how it works. Plus, if you played any other FFG games, you know they love to do multiple copies of heroes. That's just how it works. I guess it should say characters. Um, so it's no surprise to see Darth Vader having a new um, incarnation. But what's really cool is... It's at the, at the rare level instead of the legendary level, which is awesome. So it's a much more accessible one. And he's a lot different than the other one, right? The, the other Vader is much more of a high health, slowly choke you uh, out of cards, have really good dice, but only two damage sides, so a little bit inconsistent. This Vader? This Vader doesn't mess around. This is like Jedi Knights at the peak of his powers doing damage. Uh, Vader, he is a beast. Uh, he's got four damage sides on. I'm thinking real quick, like, who else has four damage sides? I believe the answer is nobody. Um, so he's got four damage sides. They're kind of weird. One range is going to be on, it's going to be a problem at times. Um, you're probably going to be running him with some sort of melee weapon, stuff like Kylo's saber. You're going to roll that one range and just go, oh, you're kidding me. So he kind of only has three damage sides, but, but technically he does have four. Maybe maybe he could even go in a guns deck, right? Because he doesn't have um, any modified melee. So all of his damage just goes through, which is kind of insane. And um, since it all goes through, you could run him with somebody like, I'm just going to throw out uh, Django, something like that. You could go Elite Vader, Elite Django. You could only play guns, no melee weapons, just count on Vader to be bashing their skull in while Django cheats. Like, this is a real deck, maybe. Um, he's pretty amazing. So he's got one damage, two damage, three damage that he pays for. Okay, that's unfortunate. He's got to pay for that side, but that's reasonable. And then he has a special. Do three damage and deal a damage to this character. So he has two three damage sides, a two damage side, and a one damage side. Like... When you see this, you almost fall out of your chair. He's so good. Um, so you assume his cost must be really high. 1317 is very low for a die this good. It doesn't have any resources, which is could be problematic. Um, but it does have a discard, which is interesting. Like That could be useful. I highly doubt you're ever resolving this. If you're playing this Vader, you are doing damage. Um, it's a little scary. 11 health is fine um it's actually pretty darn good for that cost but doing a damage every time he resolves that special is going to add up uh so it's going to be interesting to see what we end up running him with and thinking about it that that uh vader it's actually it would be it'd be vader one die Django. i think i said elite um that could be interesting the the deck that i really think pops out is the uh vader kylo ren deck uh kylo only costs 13 at elite so you'd be able to have four dice that have a total of seven damage sides. And it makes up for the fact that you don't have a ton of resource regeneration because you have Holocron, right? So, like, things could get real crazy. I would, I would assume that in this deck, they're going to kill Vader, and you're going to have a uh, Kylo Ren with three awesome upgrades swinging away at the end of the game against whatever they have. And that's a scary thought. Um, this Vader looks real good. At first glance, I wasn't sure, um, but when I realized you could pair him with an elite, uh, Kylo Ren, that just feels really good. It's going to be interesting to see who else comes in at 13 points. There's not really that many good options right now. Um, you could do the, the same thing with like a Vader Raider where you just go one, you know, like one other die and, and two Vader dice. I think though, with this cost... You really want to get the full-on four. And I kind of feel like this is just infinitely better than Vader Raider, right? Vader Raider has three dice, and one of the characters is kind of blah. 
This is, you kill Vader, you're left with Kylo Ren or maybe somebody else who's 13 and is amazing. Um, I mean, you could go Grievous, you could go one die Grievous with him. That's kind of interesting. Like, that's some serious beat sticking right there. Uh, bottom line is, I think this Vader is really good. Um, I think he actually drops the value of old Vader. I don't think old Vader will be seen that much. Um, his cost is so prohibitive at 1621. It's really going to depend. If there's some new guy to pair with old Vader that works really well, then we'll keep seeing him. If not, I could easily see this new Vader card almost replacing that Vader, at least in the current role, right? The, the Vader we use now is usually used in a beat stick kind of role, and this dude's just a better beat stick. He has less health, but he's a way better beat stick and way better for his cost. Um, that's really the big thing. So this Vader's awesome. We're going to see him get ready, and he's only rare. So excited to see a rare, awesome Darth Vader. That makes me real happy. Uh, the next most exciting flashy card, uh, character-wise, is Obi-Wan the Mysterious Hermit. Ah, Obi-Wan. Like, let's not look at his cost. Let's just not look at his cost yet. 11 health, 2 damage sides, 2 focus sides, and a resource. The die is solid. The health is definitely solid. Guardian is really cool. Uh, if this guy is like a 10-14, that Guardian would be amazing. Um, his ability is nuts. Before this character is defeated, you may play a blue card from your hand or discard pile for free. Obvious answers are stuff like one with a force. Um, a really cool play might be something like Noble Sacrifice to kill Obi-Wan as your first action of the turn, neutralizing their best character, getting Noble Sacrifice back, doing it again with Obi-Wan, hitting their other character, and completely neutralizing their turn. That could be something. Just putting great cards like force throws on people, that's going to be really solid. Uh, the one thing that I don't think is going to work, and I've seen some people talking about this, is things like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Uh, you're going to play Deflect on the die that was going to kill him, thus making it so he doesn't die. I, I don't see that happening. I think um, the, he, the, the effect of his death is already in the queue. I don't think you can jump pre-death and somehow pull him out of the death. There isn't a card. There is a card, actually, that says instead, like a second chance, for blue characters, I could see that. Um, but I don't think we're going to see that with Obi-Wan. It would be pretty broken if you could just infinitely loop him and make him like literally impossible to kill. That would be kind of bad design. Um, second chance you have to work for. This, like if Han said, every time he was killed, go into your discard pile and put second chance on him. Like, that doesn't work. It would be literally broken. Um, and I worry that that would be the case with Kenobi if they did something like that. So I don't think we're going to see that. Um, but it's really interesting. Everything about him is really cool, but he seems to me like a support character. Like, you don't want Guardian on your best character, right? You just don't want that. And then you look down at his cost, and you see 1620. That's Luke Skywalker cost. And Luke, it's really prohibitive to play Luke. Like, he has to be the main focus of the deck, and when he dies, you die. And Obi-Wan is not good enough to fill that role. And Obi-Wan, it feels like you need him to die. So I, I kind of shake my head and wonder, like, what were they doing with this? Um, it feels like they messed the design up of this card. Like, it either his cost should have been lower and then his dice should have been worse. Or you put this ability on somebody. Like, I love the death ability. That goes great with the cost. But, like, Guardian on him, it's, it's just... This card, to me, doesn't work. Like, it just doesn't work together unless there's a new character that's 14 cost elite that's really, really strong, right? That pairs with him. Um, then it'll work very well. But as it stands, I look at this and I go, I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. How does this, how does this work? How, how does it function? How can you have your Luke be a character you're supposed to have die? I don't understand. But we'll see. Hopefully I'm wrong. I was way more excited about Obi-Wan pre-spoiler than I am post-spoiler. So, and he's a legendary, so because it's a cool effect. I don't know. It feels like one of those cards that has such a flashy effect that it's hard to balance that effect, right? Like that effect only gets more and more broken over time, more crazy interactions. So I have a feeling 
in this set, he's going to be kind of a bust, and he's going to be one of those cards we look forward to, but I may be totally wrong. Like We may see enough cards that just make him great. Um, perhaps the flashiest card in the whole spoiler, there's only four spoilers, is this card Rise Again. We're not going to look at the cost. We're just going to pretend it doesn't exist. Heal five damage from a unique blue character. Then you may play an upgrade from your discard pile on it for free. Wow, right? This is the exact card. Remember when, when Palpatine was spoiled and I said, I think there's going to be a helper card. Uh, and people said, I don't know. I don't think so. What could you do that would only help Palpatine and not help other characters to make it totally broken? And we may be looking at it. This may be that card um, that helps Palpatine and keeps him alive longer. I'm not sure if it's enough. Maybe in combination with another card or two. But it's very interesting. And then getting an upgrade out of it also is kind of crazy. Um, so it's like a second chance, but you control it much more. Like second chance feels really great right now because there's not a ton of ways to remove it. But with another set, my guess is there'll be more and more ways to remove it and it'll become less valuable. This card, there aren't event cancels that we have right now. So it's going to be really hard once they get it off. They get it off and the guy heals for five. And they get a blue upgrade for free. A Force Lightning, a Mind Probe. That means for one cost, you heal five damage. Because because these things cost four. All right, but let's, let's, let's be real. Let's turn to the five costs. Uh, raise your hand if you've built a deck that can consistently get five money extra while at the same time playing upgrades and playing events to keep characters alive. I don't believe that exists. Um, so it's really tough, I think, to make this card work in a blue deck. That's that's the downside, right? Like um, Endless Ranks is a real hard card to make work, but it's easier because you can play stuff like Drudge Work. Um, second Chance is only three, and that sometimes can feel tough, but you can make it happen. Crime Lord costs five. Basically, as soon as you start amassing piles of money... Your opponent's antenna goes up, right? They're like, dang. What? What could they do for five? Oh, God. They could ace in the whole crime lord. Okay, I got to work around that. They could rise again. I got to work around that. Um, so it is cool that just the existence of this card is going to make people worried as you get to the late game and you start getting money. Uh, that happens sometimes. Uh, it could actually be great, like amazingly great for Dooku. Dooku can live so long that it's quite feasible in a Dooku deck um, that you could get three upgrades on him, have a couple turns where you're not even going for money. You just get money because you've got five dice, and Rise Again may work out for that deck. Um, the thing is, I think this card is so flashy that people are going to see this and think, oh no, blue, blue villain is totally broken now. You'll never be able to kill Vader. You'll never be able to kill Palpatine. I could barely ever kill Dooku as it is. Now he'll never die. It's hard to get five money. I'm just saying, five resources is a lot in this game. It's very challenging to get it. I think what I'll end up doing is building a Palpatine deck with a, with data pads that I'll play early um, and then overwrite them as the game goes on and hopefully ramp up some money as I'm going along and then be able to play a Rise Again without too much trouble. However... If they play Disrupt, if, if they take my money away, then it's going away and this won't happen. So I think it's a really cool card. I think it's incredibly flashy and exciting, kind of like Crime Lord was. And then when we play it out, we're going to be like, eh, it's usually a discard. Like, I, I imagine one of them will go in most blue, especially mono blue villain decks or, or a deck where you have like a Vader Raider and it's just a Vader. But just flash back to your Vader Raider moments. What if you had $5 extra? The answer is probably never, or you were slaughtering your opponent, or you had the weirdest, worst uh, draw ever where you couldn't get upgrades. So it's going to fit in a small amount of decks, but boy, if it finds a good home in one of these decks, or there's some card that lets you cheat it out, or that somehow lets you pay less for it, or something, or even a card that makes a lot of money, even temporarily, like gain four credits for the turn, four resources for the turn, and then discard them at the end of the turn. Anything like that is going to make Rise Again really good. Like, if you just threw it into the game right now, it'd be an interesting card. 
but I think it's pretty easy to play around. It's flashy, but I don't think it's quite as good as we think it is. All right, the last spoiler for today is the most interesting, I think. It's the carbon freezing chamber. It's not quite as flashy as the other ones, but claim, choose a character die. That die cannot be rolled until the next round. Um, really interesting. Like, incredibly interesting. You think, when you think about this, you think like, okay, this is the perfect battlefield to punish those punk three dice decks like Vader Raider. Now it's just a one die Vader and a one die Raider. Psh, I could easily handle that. The problem is, in order to consistently claim fast enough to use this battlefield, you have to be the faster deck, which is the decks that this seems to be targeting. So... I don't really know what deck this goes in, right? Like, if you're running a more controlly deck that would love to pluck off one of your opponent's dice, are you really only rolling one of your three characters? You're you're gonna leave four dice on the board? I don't I don't understand how you're gonna be fast enough to make this happen. Um, what it could do is is lead to these really interesting scenarios where people end up giving up half to three quarters of their turn just to protect their dice. That's gonna be kind of weird. Um, stuff like Outpost that says, you know, special trigger the battle battlefield as if you claimed it. That card just went way up in combination with something like this. I don't know if that'll be viable because you still have to play this as the battlefield and maybe it doesn't work. And then if your opponent doesn't choose it, then Outpost goes back to being garbage. Um, so I don't know. I don't understand how this battlefield fits. It's either going to be one of those battlefields that's bonkers and in most and in like a lot of decks or it's just going to be completely unplayed because it kind of has an opposite effect than what you would expect like it seems like it would be perfect for elite palpatine because elite palpatine is going to be so fast but then at the same time it's absolutely destructive to palpatine your opponent may be willing to give up three quarters of their turn every time just to pluck off one of his dice but maybe that's what you want because it stretches the game out so Bottom line is I think there's going to be a ton of testing with this battlefield, and we're just going to have to wait and see what the other cards look like, what it's going to go with. It certainly is a very, very, uh, like, has a huge impact, and it's interesting. And those huge impact battlefields, they don't get put in tons of decks because they're scary. They're double-sided, man. You think that it's going to go your way, and when it goes against you turn after turn, oh, it's the worst. All right, so... Hopefully you enjoyed uh, all these spoilers as much as I did. Make sure you check out the Team Covenant article. Uh, they have asked Lucas a whole bunch of uh, great questions. When I said article, I meant video. Um, Lucas had some really cool answers about the direction of the game, some fascinating stuff. I think it's well worth a watch, and I'll see you next time on Tiny Grimes Games.